Downsize your life and get out of debt. You don't need all the stuff that you have. Start with a garage sale. eBay, Craigslist. Craigslist is a great way of getting rid of things. Donate it. And finally, just trash it. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Make sacrifices now to live free for the rest of your life. It's the opposite of buy now and pay later. Get a smaller home. Buy used cars. Pay off your debt. Live closer to your work. Have, have your family move in. Don't eat out as much. Or at all. Number four, how to learn. As men and women are pushed into a highly specialized career, we've lost the skills necessary to manage a simple life. Men no longer build and women no longer sew or even cook. Work with others to solve problems. I cannot think of any problem that I have gone through my life that I did not rely on somebody else to help me either mentally do it or physically do it. And that's something that's not taught in our school system. We're taught not to cheat and work with others. And yet that is an essential skill to getting through difficult things in our life. Ask questions. Don't memorize answers. That to me is, is, is learning. Just keep asking questions. You'll get to your answers. And when you, get, when you learn those answers, they'll stick with you forever. Whereas if you memorize facts and figures and stuff, they're memorized for a week and they're gone the next. Find out the why, not the how. Stop feeding your head with stuff that does not make you a better person. You know, you can take a typical teenage girl and she may be able to recite the entire movie of Twilight, but yet can't tell you, you know, how to balance a checkbook. The education system is an indoctrination system and does not prepare you for the real world. Create a conspiracy. A conspiracy is to co-inspire, to breathe together, to work together. And there's nothing wrong with that, provided that they're not illegal. And there's nothing bad about getting with your neighbors and, and creating, dividing up what you're going to grow for the next year. Working towards you know, having the men to get together and, and go shooting once in a while so they can see you know, who's good at, at uh, shooting or rifles and, and stuff like that. Having the women get together and you know, work together on sewing. I mean, that was always a, a common theme in, in tribal communities where the women got together, they sewed together, they, they raised the children together, they cooked together. And if you can get a goal together, you may be able to have business opportunities with these people and, and be able to you know, work towards a common goal using all your unique talents. This could just be you and your wife or you and the whole community, provided that you're working with those, with those people in the same world vision and morals. Stick with people who, who you relate with. Don't waste a moment on anybody who you know, has those psychopathic tendencies because they'll, they'll be toxic and destroy whatever you're working towards. Work together to make the family stronger. Help others get out of debt. If you can provide them with a job, uh, a side job, that you would uh, normally pay some stranger, work with somebody that you know, that you know and, and give the money to them so they can you know, have more wealth. If we can, the more money that we can keep spreading amongst ourselves, the better off we'll be. Transfer assets from younger generations instead of debt. Right now, most people only have debt and the debt gets, we, we don't have assets to keep giving to our children. You know, if you have a house that's paid off, that is a great way of transferring that. And if you could sell that house at a very cheap rate to your younger generation, it's definitely something to look at. Uh, I mentioned, you know, gold. The Rothschilds, it's rumored that they have all this gold and, and precious jewels and stuff in unaccounted vaults that are, the government doesn't know about. And that's one of the keys of them being able to create uh, wealth because if the wealth was never taxed during, uh, you know, estate taxes and stuff, that's how they were doing it. Now, there's a lot of legal ramifications, and, you know, I'm not a, a, a tax attorney, but that's how the Rothschilds did it, and that's something that you could think about, too. But, again, consult your tax attorney, consult your lawyer, consult everybody, do your own due diligence. Don't listen to me. Maybe I'm full of bullshit. But make a plan and write it down and take action and have people work with you on that, uh, even if it's very minimum goals, like just having a community garden and somebody being you know, responsible for the broccoli or making sure it's watered once in a while. 
Um, start working together on simple things. So when the tough times come, you already have all those uh, hard things done and you've already sorted through uh, the people you know you can't rely on. Educate each other. I mean, I know my greatest talent is to be able to, you know, pull all these big pictures together and, and formulate master plans. But I tell you what, maybe I'm not a good gardener. And somebody who is a good gardener, I can share my talents and they can share their talents. Men should do their actual living and working in communities, small enough to permit genuine self-government and the assumption of personal responsibilities federated into larger units in such a way that temptation to abuse great power should not arise. Mohandas Gandhi. And that's how our country used to be. And here's Gandhi saying, if we have all these small communities that individuals are bound together, they have the same common interest, same uh, moral standards, and there's responsibility inside those groups, that's great. And if we can have small communities that have those that can bind together those groups, those, then those communities can be bind together into larger federations. But the more decentralized and local we have, where there's more responsibility and less, uh, le there's less chance for abuse. And you kind of think about like you watch these older movies, at, you know, in England or Ireland, uh, the Scottish, they had all these clans. Well, the clans were small groups of families that were together. They had the sh same principles. They they vowed to defend each other. I had the same common goals, and they all profited together or died together. And that uh, when wars happen, the head of the clan would pledge his men towards a common cause. But after that common cause was done, then they would break up and go back to their own way of living. And that, to me, is a sustainable, responsible, healthy environment that I would love to participate in. And yet, we don't have that. We have a we have a far-reaching, powerful government with their IRS and the Federal Reserve and all these governors and senators that lord over us and make decisions. You know, they pass bills without us even knowing what's in the bill, and we have to pass it just based off of blind faith. I mean, what kind of crap is that? Create a local economy. You vote with your dollars. Buy local, or at least buy American. I mean, you have so few choices to buy American nowadays. When you do have that choice, it may even not be something that you really want, but buy it because it's the right thing to do. Buy organic food. Don't buy this 3,000 mile Caesar salad. Barter and pay with your time and effort. Uh, the Amish help each other with no money, and it, gives a, it feels good to give that. Pay with constitutional money or create a local currency. Visit local restaurants, not chains. Use the internet to buy from small local producers. This is a you know an interesting thing. Instead of you know, most companies nowadays, in order for them to be successful, they make pitches to Walmart to produce their products. So say you you're a lamp maker and you make lamps in China or whatever, they make a commitment to Walmart. Walmart says, okay, we'll buy this from you at this price, and we'll distribute it throughout all of our stores, and we'll have one big promotion, and that's how you're going to make all your money. But if you're able to sell your same product through the internet, you know, you can keep more of that money yourself, cutting out the middleman and giving directly to either the inventors or the manufacturers. Think about the difference between debt and equity. This is how the rich invest. They buy equity and sell debt. We put money in banks and they loan it to our neighbors at interest and create debt. We should pool our money at the local level and take the equity. Older people can give capital and younger people can give sweat for equity. And then in this scenario, character will matter once again. So why send all your money to Wall Street to fund this tyrannical operation when you could help build a local business and provide local jobs? And you also have the added benefit of you actually touching your investment. Create a moral code and live it. Let it be the cost of admission in your life. Don't waste another second on bad people in your life. Don't support any business that doesn't meet your values. Don't support any politicians that don't reflect your values. 
When you meet good people, businesses, and events, become their biggest fan and encourage everyone you know to support those that are making a difference. We do this naturally, but we tend to focus on prices a business sells and not the way that they treat their workers or if they spent their money goes to making the world better or your local community better. Get a real world education. Instead of sending your child to college that you can't afford to get taught stuff that they don't need, find a trade that they like and intern there. Find a mentor or become an apprentice. Travel to different parts of the, of the country or world to get a different experience. 